All right, so today we are here with Malin Chavez, and she is the founder of Front Row Accessible, uh, which is an organization that aims to advocate for inclusivity and accessibility in entertainment venues. So welcome, Malin. How are you today? Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I'm doing good. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad. Um, so if you could just tell me a little bit uh, about yourself and just kind of why you started uh, front, row, front Row Accessible. Sure. Yeah. Um, I live in uh, Miami, Florida. I'm 27 years old. I love going to concerts. Um, I do a lot of advocacy work and I also um, do uh, columnist writing and editing for a website called um, Rare Disease Advisor. So that's kind of what I do for a living. And essentially I started front row accessible because like i said i love going to concerts and i've been to so many at this point that i just kind of decided that there's some work that needed done in the area there's so much accessibility issues and, and i just really wanted to kind of help be a voice and and uh, express those concerns so maybe there can be more uh, change in the future to make it more inclusive for everyone yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm definitely an avid concert goer as well. So um, I can definitely understand kind of the, the frustration that you feel when when a venue isn't fully accessible. Um, but mm -hmm. definitely, I feel like occurs on a more frequent basis than we would like to happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I guess, like, could you tell me a little bit about um, just kind of like the work that you're currently doing. I know I saw on, on your Instagram that you have um, various stories from various individuals and um, just kind of their experience in music venues. And um, so, yeah, if you could just tell me kind of a little bit about that process. Yeah, so um, I found such huge support up to now from the community, from others, you know, that, that experience similar struggles. So I just want to um, get the word out there, first of all, and then kind of take from everyone's own experiences and own obstacles with going to any kind of event and just kind of talk to everybody about what kind of changes they'd like to see or what kind of um, good experiences they've had too because mm -hmm. it's not it's not always bad obviously yeah. there's obviously good venues out there that have uh, the right idea as to what to do so um, I'm just like reaching out to a lot of people talking to a lot of people and, and trying to get the message going so we can like just come together as a community I guess to to really um solidify some things that we like to see from from these venues that host events yeah definitely so so how can um how can someone submit their story to you to be showcased on on social media um i'm on instagram and on uh, facebook as front row accessible and i also have an email set up for people to reach out which is just front row accessible at gmail.com and i've been receiving people's stories and and experiences through there and then i just kind of ask for a picture if anyone has any and then i like to to put it on social media and uh share everyone's stories because I have a lot of stories myself but if yeah. I have a lot then so does everyone else you know <laughs> yeah no definitely I mm -hmm. um I I might uh, submit a story to you soon actually I, oh, I that's usually good. review um, a lot of music venues on mm. on my YouTube channel and talk about the um, accessible features that they have at the various venues so um yeah I definitely have some some stories to share so so that would be yeah, great I'd yeah. be happy to hear all your stories because um, you know we're the ones that are out there kind of like living it you know and yeah. I think a lot of people don't really understand what we might be talking about until they experience it for themselves 
Yeah, no, definitely. It's like, it's like something that a lot of people don't think about, especially if you're not like a wheelchair user, a mobility aid user. So it's good. It's good to yeah. get the firsthand experience. Yeah, well, well, I guess while while we're on that part of the subject, I guess what what are some uh, um, experiences you've had at music venues, and um, I guess like some good and bad experiences. <laughs> Uh, well, we can start with the bad ones. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, essentially, you know, everything's been so crazy uh, post-pandemic, so I haven't yeah. exactly been to a lot of shows. I haven't been to a couple, but before the pandemic hit specifically, I went to an event called Riptide, which took place down here in Fort Lauderdale Beach. And uh, I have to say, that's what really catapulted the whole a more accessible initiative because the accessibility was so poor and so not thought out correctly. Um, I had so many obstacles while we were there. Um, it was on the beach, so I mean that says enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wheelchairs and sand don't really go together. No. Um, they had they had like um, sidewalks to lead that led to the two stages. But then the issues that that I came across when we went to the main stage, I went to see the Killers, which is one of my favorite bands. Um, it was like a cemented. Yeah, they're awesome. It was like a cemented area, which is fine. And it was just like for ADA access, I guess. But the platform was behind a tree. And then the, the secondary issue is that there's people there that, you know, really didn't need to be there. People that are fully able to stand, you know, the whole time. And then they're just mm -hmm. standing in front of everyone that needs to sit you know for the yeah. show so i mean there's uh, a lot of times you find not enough um control i guess of those areas mm -hmm. so that was a big thing and then the the third issue i had was um just kind of getting onto the beach section where the sidewalks were because um before that part of all of the food vendors were on the sidewalks that would lead to the stage so and there was no other way to get up on the on the sidewalk and when I asked you know some securities or whatever they're like we can just lift your chair up you know you don't need the card cut or anything we can just pick I, you up <laughs> I, I love how that's always a solution uh -huh. in people's minds uh -huh. like to lift uh -huh. our our two three hundred pound chair over a yeah. sidewalk <laughs> Oh yeah, goodness. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, and thank you for wanting to do that, but that's not how that yeah. works. <laughs> thank you for the offer, but no. Uh -huh. Um, so that was just kind of like, like the catapult for everything. And I was just like, oh, okay, we need a little more insightful design into all these mm -hmm. things. And uh, experiences like that, I've had so many others. You know, I've been to see um, Fall On Boy, which is my most favorite band of all time. Um, I've put down like insane money to sit at the front just to show up to the show and have them be like well you know the pit isn't ADA so you technically can't be here and I'm like no I paid to be here so you're gonna let me in <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it's amazing to me sometimes how how when there's a general admission standing section they don't mm -hmm. have the option for for people who use wheelchairs to to go down into that section because it's a completely different experience than exactly. being back like in the back on a raised platform that mm -hmm. experience is not the same as if you're in a pit or in the front row or yeah um, exactly yeah it's crazy um yeah no just when you were talking about the tree being in the way that just reminded <laughs> me of when i was on the parahoy cruise paramours like concert cruise mm -hmm. um they the ada section had a raised hot tub like in front of it so no way the entire, yeah <laughs> so the, on the entire time i was staring at a hot tub and i couldn't see anything 
And that's unbelievable. Yeah, and I was sitting with some of my friends who also use wheelchairs, and we were all just like, we're, we're, we're staring at a hot tub. That's not terrible. <laughs> like, why is the ADA section on the stage? Then if you wanted to walk over to the other side of the stage, there was complete open area that had no obstructed view or anything, and it would have been wheelchair accessible, but they decided to put the ADA section where the hot tub was instead of this other area. And I'm yeah. like, so it's all about, I feel just, I've been, the concert venues need to um, just kind of observe their surroundings more and just see kind of which, which areas would make the best ADA section. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, I, sorry, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, have, I wasn't going to say it. You're good. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I think that I, what I like to tell people a lot when I'm trying to explain what my mission is all about is, you know, on paper, those ADA areas are there and they exist. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I'm not saying that necessarily they're always neglected, like, you know, because legally these spaces have to exist for us. I just right. think that, that the next step in not only having those spaces is that they don't really think about whether or not they're practical. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I think it's like yeah. easy. It's easy for them to legally fulfill their requirements, but then to actually make it practical and accessible and usable to somebody in a wheelchair or any kind of, you know, mobility aid or mm -hmm. hearing sensitive areas or anything like that. And they just don't they don't go all the way and, they, and that's what I think people need to have a little bit more awareness about because like come on you're really gonna put the ADA section like behind an obstructed view like <laughs> somebody th didn't think that out all the way <laughs> exactly exactly mm -hmm. um so I guess yeah what well I guess since we're talking about some of the ADA uh, requirements um if you just want to talk a little bit about some of the requirements um like I know, I know there's you know a certain percentage that a lot of venues are required to provide people with disabilities. Like seating wise, a certain percentage in a venue or a certain type of seating. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess kind of can you just talk about I guess a little bit what we're we're uh, referencing when we talk about ADA ADA seating, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it depends. Um, you know, not every venue is the same, and, and the legal requirements I think are so ambiguous sometimes with what what they're required to do. But yeah, they're supposed to have like an X amount of seating and an X amount of space and and all that stuff. But but really, if you go to a lot of these places, that is so limited for the size, for the space, mm -hmm. for like. For like everything, because I went to big arenas um, down here in Miami. We have the FTX Arena, which was previously called the AAA. Um, that place is huge, okay? It can seat easily 50,000 people, and yet there's no ADA section on the floor. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. That's like, crazy. that's never an option. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and I feel, I feel like, too, it's also so different when you attend a concert at a small club um because i know out here in la there are a lot of clubs that i go to where you know it's just the entire venue it's general admission you know standing room only mm -hmm. like that's that's how it's set up and mm -hmm. a lot of times when you go to those venues it's very they're very like makeshift ada sections where they you get there and they're just like, oh, you need ADA? Okay, come over here. And they just like shove you in front of a speaker and it's like <laughs> an instructed view. And like, yeah. and like, you know, if you if someone who you're with needs to sit down, they just have a, a folding chair that's like, you know, shoved behind the speaker. And it's like, you can't even see the stage anyway because there's mm -hmm. just like a speaker there. But then some venues are great about it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I guess it really really does just depend on where you go um at this point but yeah well, I guess we're talking about 
good seating, but but it's a, a a venue you went to where they've had fantastic ADA seating. <laughs> well, it's a little it's a little rough to answer, honestly, which says a lot about you know seating in general at these venues. Yeah. But I would say that one of the best uh, venues I've been to for ADA seating. Um, I don't know because like it's such a it's such a complex thing depending on what yeah. kind of event it is, um, who's performing, is it a sports venue? You know, there's there's so much more that goes into it, and and I think at the end of the day, it's just how much money they want to make. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. You know. So, I mean, it's really tricky, and I think it's a lot more complex than people think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I feel like a lot of times, too, it also has to, to do with how well the, the employees are trained, too, mm -hmm. and with their, their knowledge of what ADA seating is and accessibility and just what those terms mean in general, because I feel like sometimes they'll go places and you'll say, oh, we need ADA seating, and no one even knows what that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's not okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess kind of what, what are your long-term goals with, with Front Row Accessible, and kind of what are you um, hoping to achieve in the next couple years, short-term or long-term? Um, long term, I just really want Front Row Accessible to become something a little bit more grand scale, um, hopefully something national that, you know, everyone from different states can just kind of like contribute to and be a part of because, you know, everyone everywhere likes to have a good time and go to a <laughs> sporting event and go to a concert and go see some theater, you know. So I just want the message to become so big and maybe just even, like, consolidate as a community, like, um, a letter that we can all send to these venues um, requesting the things that we need and, and the spaces that we deserve to be, you know, inclusive as a society. Um, I really just like to put a concrete kind of uh, letter or something for that so that everyone yeah. anywhere can just, you know, send this message to wherever they want to visit and be able to speak up for for the spaces that we deserve, because that's that's really what it boils down to. It's we all deserve to be part of all of this. Yeah, no, definitely. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I guess also just like kind of, um, can you just go over a little bit more about how um, how people can get in touch with you again, um, and like the best way to get involved. For sure. Um, people can reach out to me on Facebook groups, on Instagram, and just have to search Front Row Accessible. And if you have a message you'd like to send me personally, you can send me an email at frontrowaccessible at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to, to hear any kind of like suggestions or stories or experiences and good ones and bad ones. Or if you just want to tell me something for fun, I'm also willing to listen. Um, um, or if you're in the area and you want to go to a show together, we can also arrange that. <laughs> awesome. Um, but essentially, I like you know everyone, everyone from A to Z to be a part of this, not just people you know that have uh, accommodation needs, but also like artists and radio stations and managers and everyone yeah. that's like part of doing all these events because everyone needs to know and everyone needs I guess more um, awareness and more knowledge about what uh, what kind of audience members are out there sometimes and what we need as a as part of the audience <laughs> yeah definitely I guess mm -hmm. one thing we one thing we actually kind of didn't talk about which I just thought of when you brought that up uh, about the artists and the managers and all of that is making the backstage areas accessible to to artists mm -hmm. that have disabilities too, which mm -hmm. is also something that I think needs to be talked about more as well. Um, 
Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if that's something you're also going to end up talking about with your organization, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's really interesting as well. Um, yeah, well, it's like needless to say also that if there's disabled audience members and there's disabled artists as well, and, and if anything, they deserve it even more because they're just trying to practice their art wherever it may be, yeah. and, and for that space to not be accessible is really, really such a terrible thing to experience. I can't imagine if I was like a, a singer or a songwriter or something and then I show up for a gig and it's not accessible. I think I would just I know. cry. I would just cry. <laughs> I know, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, and like a lot of venues too that um, that were built, I, I don't remember the year exactly, but um, that have... Uh, like backstage areas that were built before a certain date. A lot of times those historic venues mm-hmm. don't have accessible backstage areas. And that's, I don't know if I feel like we need to work towards figuring out a way to help um, venues renovate those backstage areas so that, so that it's, they're more accessible to, to artists with disabilities and just be more inclusive and um, work towards having equal representation for people with disabilities in the arts community is also really, really important. Also, just like for audience members and for artists as well. Um, Exactly. I mean, I really think it's kind of a poorly made circular logic. I think there's a stigma as a society that disabled people don't go out, don't enjoy things, Mm -hmm. they don't participate, and therefore that's why these, like, um, areas don't exist as much or people don't know about them as much but then it just turns into since people don't know about it much then we don't go out as much so it just yeah. it always feeds into each other very it's a very vicious cycle in my yeah. opinion and we need to just kind of break that <laughs> yeah no definitely mm-hmm. um but yeah I look I really look forward to seeing what what you achieve with Front Row Accessible um it sounds like a great organization and yeah, I can't see, can't see, can't wait to see what you uh, achieve. So. Thank you. I'm super passionate about it. Like it's, it's one of my, my, it's my favorite single most favorite hobby. So I can assure you that I'm just going to try to push this as far as I can, because it's not only for me, obviously it's for everyone else that I also want to enjoy the same things that I do. Um, yeah. I get to enjoy them, thankfully, but it's not, it's not easy. Sometimes it's with a yeah. fight. So I don't want anyone else to have to fight for it. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much. All right. Well, that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that little bell button down below to receive a notification. The next time I upload a video, I upload videos every Friday and occasionally on Wednesdays. I hope you have a phenomenal day, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.